Hello all my automotive friends. You're probably watching this video to learn the difference between a 4-pin and a 5-pin relay. Well, I'm here to tell you that there isn't really any difference except for the 5-pin obviously has one extra leg, but that leg is always closed, which means it's always connected. And a lot of people are referring to this relay as the high beam, low beam relay. And that is not exactly true. It could, it could work for a high beam, low beam situation, but you'd have to have it in conjunction with another relay, more likely a four pin relay. If your car's like many, your high beam, low beam, and your actual headlight switch is all up on the uh, left hand turn signal lever. In other words, you push it in and out, or you forward and backwards to make it high beam, low beam, you turn the knob to turn the headlights on. All of those wires in that switch are really uh, low amp wires, so they're not gonna handle the amperage of uh, running headlights up front. So it's gonna have, to have a relay in the system somewhere. So you're gonna have to have a relay in order, when you turn the, the light switch on, turn it to power, you're gonna have to have a relay to add power for the headlights. Now, if you have this other relay in, in conjunction, the five pin, it will then immediately default to the low beam. Then when you push the switch forward, or push the lever forward, what that'll do is it'll engage the electromagnetic relay and move the switch from 87A, which is always contact, and that'd be your low beam, it'll move it over to the pin 87, which then would now be your high beam. From my experience, a five pin relay on a car is most likely used for a car alarm system. It can be used for a high beam, low beam system, and I'm sure it is, but you'll probably more commonly find them in a car alarm system. When the key is not in the ignition and nobody's in the car, it's at rest, 87A is always constantly contacted. So that means your alarm system would have power to it if it was running through the circuit between 87A and 30. Then when you get in the car and you turn the key on or if you operate a remote or whatever, it may flip the switch over from 30 to 87. That would make more sense. Now obviously looking at these relays you can see that the difference is this one's got four, one's got five, but if you'll notice the pattern of the pins are still in the same position. It's just that a five pin just has an extra leg in the middle which is 87A. So how does a relay work anyways? Well when you add powers to pin 85 and 86 it engages electromagnet and then that causes it to connect between 87 and 30. You can see here with the relay case off how the contacts when uh, pulled by a magnet pulls down and if you let it turn off the power it lets go and that's how the uh, 87 and 30 pins connect. As you can see this is a standard 4 pin relay. You add low current to the 85 and 86 pins which is engages that electromagnet. It closes 8730 which is designed for higher amps and that way you can run a cooling fan or you know a a fuel pump whatever you can see that a five pin as far as the way it works is still the same as the four pin the only thing is when there's no power to the five pin pins 87 a and 30 are always connected so with no power that's always a constant connection when you add power to 85 and 86 it engages it pulls the switch over then 87 and 30 have power and that's really the only difference between the two of them. 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to use a four pin relay. The five pin, unless you're building a street rod and you're trying to wire up a high beam low beam system which is going to take more than just the five pins, it's going to take a four pin incorporated with it. Or if you're hooking up a car alarm system, chances are you're going to use the four pin. Um, most time people buy four pins to hook up a cooling fan, you know, for your radiator or an electric fuel pump. Those, that's the most two common reasons why people need a relay. And there's no reason to use a five pin relay for something like that. I mean, because basically you're just needing a switch to turn it on or turn it off via using a lower current wires. Now, as you can see in this diagram, it shows that 85 and 86 are what engages the, the relay pulls the contacts down for 87 and 30 to be connected. It does not matter on the polarity of 85 and 86. Most diagrams always show 86 is the one that goes to ground and then power is always on the 85. It doesn't matter, I've wired them both. It's DC, it doesn't care. If you add current to 85 and 86 in either direction, positive or negative in the polarity, 
it's going to engage that relay and it's not going to hurt one thing. Your biggest goal is to be able to engage 85 and 86 with power so that you can make contact between 87 and 30. Now this is just your basic coolant fan relay wiring diagram if you wanted to hook up a, a cooling fan. <clears throat> this can apply for many different things. This is just a general idea of how, how it wires up. And actually I'll put the download link in the description so if you want to download this if you're wiring up a cooling fan because usually that's what most people are wanting to do is hook up a cooling fan and trying to figure out how to make the relay work. It's not uncommon when you get a cooling fan, you know, a high performance or aftermarket cooling fan. It'll come with the relay, uh, relay socket and use it comes with the fuse holder. And the wiring often looks like this. If you get one that has a, especially four pin, it really is not gonna matter four or five pin. If you get one like this and it has a black wire that runs off like this for the ground and it has an eyelet to tie it to ground somewhere, <clears throat> that's not that's not correct and don't go by their wiring just plan on rewiring it by the, the diagram that I've given you because this is cor incorrect now this is a relay and fuse holder that came with the fan that I put on a car not too long back and red is obviously positive and the blue wire is what goes to the fan at you know after the relay after the power has been added they put this little ground in. I guess they're assuming that this is going to be the ground for the energized coil or you know, for the actual uh, magnet in the, in the relay. I don't understand their, their idea of putting the eyelet in the middle. And then what I guess they're thinking is the white wire is going to be given power by the thermal switch, which is completely wrong unless it's a two pin thermal switch. Then maybe, but that, that doesn't make sense. The, the smartest thing for them just done done is the black wire um, can either be the power wire for, from the ignition system, only it's only got the power when the ignition's on, and the white wire can go to the actual thermal sensor which grounds when it gets to that certain temperature, or vice versa, it doesn't matter. You can add the power to the white wire from the ignition system and make the black wire the uh, the ground or the one that goes to the thermal uh, sensor when it grounds out but either way this is this this wiring here if you get one like that don't assume they're right because that's not that's incorrect but that's pretty much the difference between a four pin and a five pin relay and more than likely you're watching this because you're trying to you're wanting to wire up an electric fuel pump or a cooling fan the most two common things to hook up on a car you know doing performance items or just modifications so you're going to want to go with the four pin you do not want to go with the five pin however you can use the five pin in place of the four pin you're just going to have to remember that the middle leg 87a is always connected just don't connect to it but i would, I would highly recommend just stick with the four pin because it, it makes the most sense it's the most common and also keep in mind that you want to fuse in between your device you know pump or fan and the relay and the reason being is that way if whatever if it does pull a load it'll blow the fuse before it burns the contacts in the relay itself and also let's say your fan is 10 amps or your pump is 10 amps be sure to make that your relay is going to be at least 30 amps you want your relay to be a little bit stronger than your you know the device that's pulling it plus the fact if the fuse is Let's say you have the fan that's a 10 amp draw and you've got a 15 amp fuse maybe in, in there or a 10 amp fuse. It'll blow the fuse long before it ever hurts the contacts in the relay. So I hope you found this information helpful. And uh, if not, be sure to leave me a comment or if you have any questions or anything you want me to elaborate on, you can contact me through my site, which is the links down in the description, or you can just leave me a, a comment. I check them pretty much daily and I do reply to my comments. So. Hopefully this helped, and if so, be sure to like and subscribe and always hang around for the next video because I'm always working on something crazy or some new idea or some thought to, to confuse you even further. See you in the next one.